On August 23, it became known how many aircraft could have hit the Ukrainian armed forces at the Marinovka airfield in the Volgograd region. The drones were guaranteed to completely destroy two Su-34s, one in the repair area and one in hangar number three. One Su-24 was also blown up in the repair area. They managed to damage two Su-34 fighters and one Su-24. Judging by the damage to the fourth hangar, if there was a fighter there at the time of the attack, it definitely cannot be restored. The military watch analyzes satellite images and photographs of the results of the Ukrainian strike on the Marinovka airfield in the Volgograd region, Su-34, in the repair area, completely destroyed, Su-24 in a malfunctioning state, in the repair area, completely destroyed, Su-34, in hangar number 3, destroyed or damaged, two Su-34s. In hangars number 5 and number 6 damaged, Su-24, in hangar number 7, probably damaged, it is unknown whether the aircraft was in hangar number 4, if so, it was destroyed or damaged. The media has already noted that the Marinovka airbase is the only one in the Russian Federation where shelters for fighters were built in 2024, but they serve exclusively to protect against bad weather, and not from missiles, shells and UAVs. Ukrainian forces have officially acknowledged the use of Western missile systems in an offensive operation on Russian territory, reports The Times. The Times notes that the Ukrainian armed forces have confirmed the use of American HIMARS rocket systems to destroy bridges, pontoons and engineering equipment belonging to Russian troops in the Kursk region. The report recalls that Ukrainian forces previously demolished all three bridges across the Sim River which connected Russian-controlled areas with supply routes. As a result of these strikes, up to 3,000 enemy soldiers were trapped and military engineers were forced to construct pontoon crossings. The Times also highlighted that Russian military bloggers and international journalists have identified British, American and Italian tanks and armoured vehicles used during the assault. According to the Times, the president of Ukraine, Volodymyr Zelensky, recently dismissed concerns from Western allies about the potential consequences of using Western weapons against Russian territory. He advocated for removing all restrictions on the use of such arms. Additionally, he confirmed that Ukraine had kept its allies unaware of the cross-border offensive, anticipating that they would veto any operations that breached Russia's most stringent red lines. Zelensky also noted that Russian President Vladimir Putin has not followed through on his threats of retaliation against NATO, indicating their lack of credibility. The president also urged the West to lift restrictions on the use of long-range weapons for strikes on Russian rear areas, the Times reports. Two weeks ago, Ukrainian forces launched an offensive operation in the Kursk region. The objective is to create a buffer zone to halt attacks on the border and draw enemy forces away from the front in Ukraine. Ukrainian special forces have confirmed that they have used HIMARS systems to destroy several bridges and Russian pontoon crossings in the Kursk region. In the past two weeks, Ukrainian forces have captured a significant number of Russian soldiers. The Washington Post wrote that in 10 days, more than 300 Russian prisoners of war from the Kursk region were sent to one of the Ukrainian prisons. The security service of Ukraine also conducted a special operation in which 102 Russian soldiers were captured in one day.